Hi, welcome to this Council Connections. I'm Sharon Spangler, and with me is Jenny Breckis. Welcome to the program, Jenny. Thanks, Sharon. So, Jenny, what's it like? How's it been so far for you, being on the City Council? Well, it's been a tremendous privilege, and it's been um, just wonderful to be in this position and have the range of issues coming to us and, and trying to make good decisions and, and show leadership for our community. Jenny wasn't a new face here at City Hall because she actually was a planner for the city of Reno in a previous life. And then in doing some research on her when she was elected, I found out that your dad had actually been a mayor in the town that you grew up in. So running for office was probably something, and you, you can tell us, is it something you've thought about for a while? Well, I think my dad being a mayor of this small town, and they would rotate, they'd be the mayor and the council for about 12 years when I was growing up got me interested in the built environment. Um, it was a small residential town, but they had a lot of issues like flooding and uh, drainage issues and parks. And so um, that got me interested in um, cities and public policy, and that's why I pursued the career that I did. But um, it was a nice opportunity to be able to um, take it from this new approach, and I'm, it's just been wonderful. Being on the other side, being an elected official versus being an employee for the city, is it really different for you? It is. It really is. But, you know, everyone in this organization plays a critical role. I, I really do believe that. And the citizens and in their involvement and participation and expression to us about what's important, those are important. The, those are key roles also. So it takes a lot of people to make a city work and to work well. One of the things that you've taken on so far is infrastructure issues, and maybe you could explain to our viewers what that means and what are some of the things that you're really interested in fixing or changing. Well, when you look at um, governments in our you know, country, each, each of us plays an important role, and at the local level, and this is a level that I guess I've been so interested in from um, you know, my experience as a child, is infrastructure. I mean, the key responsibilities of local government are public safety and infrastructure, and if you look at our budgets, this is where we spend a lot of our, our resources. And so, you know, how to do that uh, well, and it, especially since it is so costly, it's related to your land development, but also building the community that you want. And uh, so that's been a focus of mine since I've been been on it. And, and it's so interesting because it's the hidden things that you don't think about, like our, our wastewater treatment plant down at the uh, east end of the valley, to just the sidewalks and the lights, um, our street lights. And there are there's even quality of life infrastructure. I think that quality of life infrastructure like your open spaces, your landscape beautification projects, and particularly your parks um, are being thought of now as infrastructure and important in attractiveness of a region and people who want to move places where you have those quality of life sort of infrastructure components. So um, it's important to make sure that you have the budgetary ability to provide all of those. You have an interesting ward because you have a lot of the um, beautiful old southwest Reno and then your ward expands out. So you have older homes and you have some of the newer developments as well. And I remember um, you were involved in a very successful project over on Wells Avenue, which was uh, unbelievable. They, they did such an incredible job of planning that whole Wells Avenue to make a Main Street feel out of it. And, and is there have been any appetite to do any of that in any other parts of the city like your ward? My ward is split by uh, South Virginia Street on the west. Councilman Delgado's ward starts on the east side of um, South Virginia Street. And uh, South Virginia Street needs to get redone, and particularly with the activity in Midtown. We're seeing a lot of conflict of pedestrians, cyclists, uh, park parkers, uh, drive through traffic. And in some areas, the sidewalk, uh, as the road was widened, is, is just inches with uh, light pole installations in the middle. It's just not compliant for an American Disabilities Act and it's not really the environment you want for a thriving revitalized business district of small scale um, businesses and shops and so that street needs to get redone. There's resources regionally through this RTC5 um, but the city's been studying it since the 90s and the reason it hasn't gotten done <laughs> some of it is priorities but it's going to be very difficult. Hard choices will have to be made on how that street is redone and I think it'll be uh, you know decisions out in the field by the engineers the planning staff 
the participants, the business and property owners, inch by inch, not only across the right of way where you've got back of building to back of building, right. but linear down South Virginia Street, lot by lot. Are we going to put a tree well here? How wide will the sidewalk be here? Will we have parking? Will we have bike lanes? So it's going to be a big exercise but and I think at this point it's planned for construction 2017 so going through the planning stages are are just about to start also but rebuilding these older streets is a priority um, and communities are doing it all around the country and I think that we recognize that this is where we need to be uh, maintaining our infrastructure, revisioning it for the changed land use and patterns that we see and so uh, it is an exciting time to be working on projects like that. And the city's lucky to have someone like you that has such a planning background to be involved in, in all of that process. And thank you all for joining us.